Hello viewers and welcome to uh, the main channel. Today we are reviewing the Church of Ruyerold, the brand new 2022 Christmas special. Now, before this video goes any further, uh, my SD card decided today, of all days, to play up. So, what will happen is rec we'll record and talk for as long as possible, but if there's a random cut in the middle where the sentence doesn't end or start the exact same, it's because I've had to stop, upload the footage, then come back and record. And it might even be in a different position, the camera might even be uh, presented differently. Who knows? So I do apologise in advance. And later today we'll also get what I got for Christmas 2023, but I thought I needed to get this reviewed on first whilst I've got some very good opinions on the episode. Let's start. So, positives before we get on to my overall balance reviews. The positives is theme tune was brilliant, Shitty Gat was brilliant, Millie Gibson's brilliant, Anita Dobson's brilliant, everyone else is brilliant. Now, th first of all, the Anita Dobson's character. Who is her character, right? I, don't, I can't remember if it's been announced who she plays, but to me, I can originally, um, I'm all, I would have said the master, but I'm thinking Russell brought back the celestial, the toy maker. I'm just, I'm gonna just say the word toy maker because I believe that's what everyone's gonna call it now, including David. So. If Russell brought back the Toy Maker, will the Russell bring back the Rani? Everyone's been dying for the Rani to return, so it is Anita Dobson's character, the Rani, because of the uh, throughout the special. Sorry about that. I'm now for the X SD card, so we'll no longer have that error. Apparently, an SD card can store, from Fact 5, can store all the footage that it deleted in a trash folder. Did not know that until today. So, to go back to what I was saying and make it more of a balanced review time, because now that we've spoken a little bit about Anita Dobson's character, let's talk about the negatives, because there is one giant negative. that I haven't seen Dr. Unleash yet, and I haven't heard the commentary yet, so I don't know if this was a budget reason or if this was a... A special reason that was done for a certain purpose. So, don't take everything I say w about this negative point with a pinch of salt because I haven't I haven't seen those bits yet. So I don't know if it's uh, if there was something more to it than what we know. So I don't really like, I didn't like how Shooty never went when we when Shooty every time Shooty went near the Titus in the Titus that he never. Well, how do I how do I put this in a in a way that that makes sense? So it, it never went in the tide. So the camera always showed the tide fly away, and we always saw the interior of the tide through the door. But no one ever fully went in the Tardis, if that makes sense. So even at the end, um, Ruby went in the Tardis, but didn't go the whole way through, which is weird. So in Ruby's first episode, we never saw the TARDIS console, we never saw any of them interact with the jukebox, we never saw any of that. Was that a, was there a specific reason for that? I don't know, but that's my only negative, because that's the only bit I didn't like about the whole special. But overall, I loved it. So let's say, let's start off the review properly. This is a spoil review. The Church of Ruby Road. If you have not seen The Church of Ruby Road, please stop what you're watching now. Stop watching this now and go and watch The Church of Ruby Road. First of all, I absolutely loved The Church of Ruby Road. The glove technology is incredible. The Sonic, I don't even know how you explain what the Sonic is because it folds in on itself, which is even more incredible that I already stated in my original review and thought of the Sonic. So, it folds in on itself, which is incredible, might I add. Then, so that's one thing that they've 
done, which is incredible. The singing, so we obviously knew there was going to be a Goblin song, but did I know the shooter was going to sing and sound that good? No way, Jose. And, I mean, Ruby just, it was odd. Ruby's interaction with the Doctor was slightly odd, because, it was only odd because of the fact that when, normally, when a companion meets the Doctor for the first time, it's normally not uh, as weird as she's automatically on board with what's going on. The companions never normally uh, already really good friends and not really knowing what's going on. So it's never really, so it's really the odd bit that it's how quickly she picked everything up. I could be wrong in that, but I do think I do think that worked quite well because it meant that it shows that Ruby's uh, just. And then Ruby's going to be one of those companions that doesn't say no or what, and just kind of goes plow straight ahead and does things. And I really did like. I didn't. I didn't think the video McCall's bits were entirely to make them the beginning. But once it worked out that Ruby was, I don't. I don't know. Right. So uh, let's try and let's explain this from the beginning. So. ITV do this program called Long Lost Families, hosted by Davina McCall. And it's all about these people that never knew their actual family and want to find their family. They're actually their real family, shall we say, because a lot of them are, are either uh, adopted, fostered. They're all in, in the care system, a lot of these people. Um, and so, so it worked really well that Davina was there. But I do think that some bits seemed a little bit like forced, but once I worked out it was long lost families that they were trying to um, replicate that. It made it a little bit more better, and I understood what was going on. So some of them wouldn't have known that she did long lost families, wouldn't have thought, wouldn't have enjoyed her segments because it wasn't really explained enough, and it just seemed slightly forced. But once you know it's a lot of families, you don't feel that it's forced, you don't feel that it's whatever, you understand how she's trying to go about it. Um, I do think that uh, Ruby not knowing who her family is, and even the show can't find who her family was, worked really well as a plot device that could be resolved within the rest of Series 14. And who knows whether or not it is. Now, Everyone's theories originally that it was Jodie's Whittaker's doctor dropping over off, but that's not correct. I know, I know, Judy could have found out when he time travelled, but he didn't. So that could have been a that that, that might be a plot device. It might be uh, come, uh, re back to. Um, I don't think that Ruby's character overall is so far anyway is a very good character that. I've never seen um, Millie Gibson before acting before because I don't really watch Coronation Street, so I've never seen. So this is this is my brand new open wide first impressions of her performance, her acting, and can I just say, if it wasn't that the Christmas special might not count in towards uh, 2024's BAFTAs, when Series Four comes out, then she's in the line of getting a BAFTA, I reckon. She'll be getting a BAFTA. So would shoot you to be fair. But because she might be getting a, a sporting actress or sporting, sporting actor um, BAFTA. But shoot you will also win a BAFTA. I, I've got a feeling that we've got two BAFTA award, award winners on our hands there. Obviously Doctor Who doesn't get put into the Emmys or the Oscars I don't think. Well not the Oscars but I don't think Doctor Who gets put forward into the Emmys. So if he does. Then I say Millie Gibson should win an Emmy as well. The performances in the episode was were was and were amazing. My favourite part of the episode, um, let's say, I just think that the chemistry between Millie Gibson and Shooty is very good. She, I mean, when I was watching the Boy Peter uh, Doctor Who takeoff, where the competition winner. Uh, of the boy Pete, of the Doctor Who conversation went to behind the scenes and met Millie and Shooty. They just seemed 
like the best of friends already. I know they're like two series ahead of everyone else, like of of the viewers, so they they're fully in for. But I've got a feeling that Ruby's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. I reckon Ruby's going to be here. I I'm going to say this right. I'm going to hold my hand up and say this. But I think Ruby is going to end up being the longest running companion now, because I do I do just think she's got the mystery to a character and it could go on for a long time and it could be a subplot in some episode that she gets close to a fam finding a family but she doesn't um the costumes for this episode Shooty's costumes were incredible and Millie Gibson's main costume is incredible so favourite part of the episode um to me personally was I was seeing leading up to it with all the goblin stuff because I thought it was rather funny how the goblins were trying to sabotage uh, what was going on and, and that made me chuckle and overall I'm going to say this episode because I've got a negative on the whole not showing the interior in the tower of this I'm only going to give it a 9 out of 10 just because of that once to find out if there's a reason for that from Unleashed and the uh, video commentary that I might change my opinion but for now my opinion is slowly on the point that it's currently a 9 out of 10. I will revisit it to tell you what I think and the next time I'll, the only time I'll ever re-watch this episode because I, because I, I'm, I'm gonna savour it is when I get to watching uh, New Who in my Doctor Who re-watching thing because since it's all come the iPlayer and I've been doing it since it all joined on Britbox anyway. I'm doing a rewatch of Doctor Who from the get go. So when it was on Britbox, I watched it from Unearthly Child, and now I'm on to the second second series of William Hartnell's era. So they're all rewatching this. So it's a Doctor Who rewatch marathon that's going to take me a very long time because each time there's a new episode and I watch it, new episodes live and all this and the other adds to the rewatch. So. On my first viewing of Church of Ruby Road, I thought it was incredible. Right, so let's get ready. So the TARDIS uh, needed, the interior needed to be shown. Right, this Sonic, um, I'm excited to see what else this Sonic can do. Because currently, the Sonic, we never had a folding Sonic, to my knowledge anyway, in the TV world. I'm curious to know whether or not Anita Dobson will be more prevalent, more present, more in it a little bit more now that we've had the ending that we had for her character so will she be the Rani, will she be the master if she's the master I'd be a little bit disappointed because I think that she still has a lot to give a lot more to push a lot more to do with the master so I want her to be the Rani really out of the two villains that knows who the what the TARDIS is Alright, so, okay, I know there's a few villains that know what the TARDIS is, but I want it to be the Rani, because the Rani hasn't returned, and the Rani has a, the Rani is also a time order, so please, the Rani needs to return, and it's going to be an Eaton Dobson, because I am going to say, right, she needs to be an Eaton Henders for anyone that doesn't know who an Eaton Dobson is, but can I just say, an Eaton Dobson as the Rani, I mean, there's not many people that have performed as Rani over the years, but Anita Dobson as Rani would be absolutely astounding because when you think of Anita Dobson, you don't think of an evil villain, right? And Doctor Who is going to say, Anita Dobson, can you be an evil villain? Oh yes, I can. Can you pretend to be a sweet old lady first? And she'll go, oh yes, I can do that. And Anita Dobson will win more awards than anything else for the fact that her performance... Her, her acting level, right, in in um, EastEnders was there, right? And imagine imagine that the, the line can goes up ever so slightly every time she was acting. And when she appears on TV regular, she goes up here. Because the reason why we're going to straight there is because the top of the lead body is there. So she has to go across first. So then every time she's having a, an appearance and stuff goes that way. And then she went into Doctor Who, whoosh! Put that way, she went up to Doctor Who, and she was incredible. So, I I think the Church of Ruby Road was outstanding, amazing, and this world plus to add all to, to all of this. 
that the um I can't remember her name, but the woman that played Ruby's mum or step adopted mum who was in Mandy beforehand. So she had a she had a, a comedy role in the um comedy series Mandy where Mandy played by Diana Morgan who who I'm gonna say this should be and could be after Sasha Duan says no, I don't want to be the master anymore. Diana Morgan could be the next master. That should that would be hilarious. So she was in this, not Diana Morgan, but um, the, but the she I can't remember who she plays in Mandy, but she was it was a I, I've not really seen do anything else other than Mandy. So her being in this showing her off her acting chops. I just say everyone in this episode showed off their acting chops incredibly. The goblins were absolutely hilarious because they looked really really freaky but hilarious. The Goblin King was hilarious. The music in it was outstanding. Obviously we already knew that the Goblin song was amazing and should have won the Christmas number one. And but we didn't know that sh Shooty no Millie was gonna start singing as well. We do know that Shooty says he's the songiest doctor which must mean in future episodes there might be other need for musical numbers. But the music in this episode was incredible. Not just Murray Gold's instrumental music, but also the lyric based music the way they were singing. So, overall, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back later today with showing you what I got for Christmas 2023. But I need to film this one first because this was my opinion that I need to get them out there as soon as possible. So, thank you guys for watching. See you all later. Time what I'm out. Bye! Don't forget to subscribe to the official Tom Mason YouTube channel.